Hi guys, Paxet Bonum. So today we are going to cover the topic called uh, pop-up boxes. So our learning competencies today would be to differentiate the types of pop-up boxes and we will use or we will utilize these pop-up boxes to enhance user interactivity in a web page. So first, I want to ask, have you seen something like this? You know, a, a web page wherein you click something or maybe you, you just enter the website and then a small window will appear um, saying something or uh, probably providing an advertisement for the likes. So I, I want you to remember which websites are those. Probably you may ask yourself, what is the purpose of the website? And what actually triggered what actually triggered the event wherein the, the pop-up window or the pop-up box appeared? Normally, we, we use pop-up boxes to provide information to the user. Or like I've said earlier, show an advertisement. Or maybe we can use it to ask inputs from the user as there is a pop-up box that caters specifically to asking users to type something into the window. So these different pop-up boxes is helpful in either conveying your message or getting a message from the user. And uh, to define first what a pop-up box is, these are windows or dialog boxes used to notify or warn a user or, like I said, get input from the user. And one of the things that is very uh, evident in pop-up boxes when you when you learn and when you know how to read codes is that pop-up boxes prevent the user from from accessing other aspects of the program until the pop-up window is closed basically if a pop-up box is invoked or called or performed um the set of codes after the pop-up box will be put on halt. Once we click OK or once we click the close window of the pop-up box, that's the only time the rest of the codes after the code of the pop-up box will resume. And that is one of the reasons why uh, pop-up boxes are normally not used when it comes to web pages. But then again, since we are an introductory course in web develop or web designing, um, this is a good start in doing scripting. So let's talk about the three different pop-up boxes. So we have the alert box, we have the confirm box, and we have the prompt box. So the alert box is this one. In an alert box, normally, we just provide a message to the users of the website, particularly in one page. The confirm box is this one. When we use a confirm box, of course, there's also a message, but the message usually is a choice. What are the choices? We only have two options. It is either the user will have to click OK or the user will click Cancel. So what we do here is if the OK button is pressed, we will be coding something and that, that's, that code will be the one to run if the button OK was clicked. If the, if the user presses cancel, of course, we also have to do several codings so that the computer or the, the web page 
will do something about it. The last one is the prompt box. Now the prompt box concern is getting an input. And if you will notice, there is a text box or a text area over here. So this is where the user will be typing something. And when they type something, whatever they place inside the text area, we can get that value. Remember the, the topic values? We can get the value and we can place it inside a variable. So just imagine if maybe we, we can ask for a number and then that value, we can get it, we can place it inside a variable. Once it's inside a variable, we can do several manipulations. Or maybe we can ask for a name. Afterwards, we, we get another prompt box, we get another name. And then at the end, we will combine those two uh, variables together and we, we can produce uh, a whole new value. But now the question would be, when is the proper time to use it? The best guide would be these three. If we want to convey a message to the user, we can use an alert box. Or if we, if we want to display a value of a variable, it's still a message. We display it using an alert box. Or if we want to um, give a choice to the user if they want to proceed or not, we will use confirm box. And if we, if we want something from the user, like an input, that's the time to use the prompt box. So let's demonstrate how should we use these three pop-up boxes. First, the alert box. Inside our script, we will be using the command alert followed by parentheses. So it's something like this. Inside our script, we will use the command alert followed by parentheses, and then we terminate. Now, if we want to display a string or a, a set of characters, we need to use quotation marks. So let's save this one and run it. So this is the alert box. We only have one button here, which is an OK button. If we press this, that's the time other codes after the script will appear. Like, let's say, for example, I'll, I'll create another alert. So as you can see, there are two alert boxes. If I refresh the web page, the first alert will be displayed. The second alert will not uh, be displayed yet. Because as I've said, once a pop-up box is being run, the rest of the codes are on pause. Once we click OK, that's the time this second alert box will be invoked. Just like this. After I press OK, the second alert box will appear. All right. So if we if we want to put our messages, like uh, a welcome greeting or any kind of message, we use the alert box. Next. We can also display variables. If we display variables, we will not be using quotation marks, but rather 
we will just place the variable name. So let's create a variable here, var um, name. So I have the variable name here. I want to display this variable. Using an alert, I will just write the variable name inside. Or maybe a computation. We can do a bit of computation. Like uh, 10 plus 10 divided by 2, that would be 15. So if we, oh wait, wait. So if we run that, the variable or the value of the variable will be displayed using an alert box. All right. So moving forward with a prompt box. So normally a prompt box, like an alert box, we can do something like that, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, let me try that one. Let's see if it will work. Yeah, it worked. So in a prompt box, using the keyword prompt followed by the uh, parentheses, it will be able to create a box wherein the user can type something. However, in this scenario, nothing will happen if I press OK. Nothing will happen if I press Cancel. And normally, when we use a prompt box, since the user will be able to input something, there must be a container for the input. So what I'm trying to say here is, if we use a prompt box, there must be a variable involved. So for example, we will create a variable named input. And this variable input since we want to get the value coming from the prompt box. So the assignment operation here would be something like this. The input, the variable input will get the prompt box. So let's see. So if we type something here, if we press OK, the value will be placed inside the variable input. If I press OK, boom. The variable input will now have will now get whatever was written in the prompt box. So how will we be able to verify if indeed the variable input got the value? Well let's alert the variable input. So let's try that. Wait, why did I uh, why, why did I put proceed? Well, anyway, yes. <laughs> okay. And then here on the alert, it was displayed. Or if you don't want to use alert, we can use document dot right. Okay. It should be input. There we go. So as you can see, there is a, a, an upgrade from the alert box using a, a simple command alert in the prompt box we need a variable so that the value that the user will place will have a container and that container will be later on used inside our program now the last one 
is the confirm box. But um, I want to give um, a sort of um, advanced, uh, what do you call this? Uh, heads up. Because it will get um, it will get complicated. In a confirm box, um, yeah, let's start from the basic. In a confirm box, we can use this simple command confirm. And then, ah, that's why I, I wrote proceed. That's for the confirm box. But anyway, um, for the confirm box, we can write a simple code like this. And it will uh, display two options, OK, Cancel. It, uh, in, my, in my case, I wrote Proceed. So if the user presses OK, it must be able to do something. If, if the user presses Cancel, it can do a different thing. However, it needs, uh, it needs more programming from us, the, the programmers. So this bit of code will not suffice. There must be more uh, paradigm, or there are more paradigms in both. And I will be giving you a snippet of what we will be doing for the next lessons, maybe next week or two weeks from now called the conditional statements. So inside the script, we will be writing an if and else statement here. Inside an if statement, that there's uh, that's the place where we will put our confirm box. So let's try doing it. We will write an if statement. Just bear with me for now. We will write an if statement, and this is its structure. Inside the parentheses of the if statement, we will write here our confirm box. Inside our confirm box, that's where we will put our text for the window. Let's say, do you want to proceed? So if I if I do something like that, it will actually run. Yeah. But it won't be able to do anything yet. So let's add the thing that will uh, appear if we press OK. Let's just use an alert. So the idea is, in the confirm box, once the confirm box appears, if we press OK, the code under if will be performed. What is the code under or inside if, rather? What is the code inside the if statement? It is an alert box displaying welcome. But if we press cancel, another or a different thing will be will be performed. So to do that, we will add an else statement. Let's write alert again. Here, um, let's just say goodbye. So let's let me show first the output. If I press OK. Uh, the message welcome will appear. If I press cancel, the message goodbye will appear. So I pressed OK, welcome. I press cancel, goodbye. So looking back at the code, since we are going to cover this topic in a few weeks' time, what you need to, to remember at this point is if the user presses OK, the code inside the if statement will be performed. So if we if we add 
four alerts here. If the user presses OK, these four alerts will be performed one after the other. But if the user presses alert, uh, let's use document that right. So let's try adding four of them or five of them. So if the if the user presses cancel, the code inside else will be performed, and that is five document that writes. So let's try pressing cancel. There we go. Five goodbyes. But if we press OK, four alerts. Okay. There we go. <laughs> so that's how we do um, confirm boxes. All right. Now we will be proceeding with an activity. So I want you to create a series of pop-up boxes. Let's try to put what you have learned in practice. These series of pop-up boxes will emulate a chatbot. So the scenario is, um, I want you to display an alert box and provide a simple greeting. It's up to you what kind of simple greeting that is. Step number two, the computer will ask for the name of the user. So remember, if you are going to ask for the name via prompt box, there must be a variable involved. Step number three, the computer will ask the user if the name is correct or not. So this will be a confirm box. And then step number four, this is where you will be placing, this is what you will need to place inside the confirm box in the if statement. So if the user uh, presses yes or I mean okay, the computer must be able to display welcome to this website user. Now what is the user? Whatever was written at step number two. But if the user clicks cancel, you must display please refresh the web page. Let's look at the sample output. Wait a minute. Let's play this one. So greeting, input. Input will be saved in a variable, proceed. Alert will be displayed with the name, with the variable. Or if we press cancel after we write the name, it will display, please refresh the page. All right. So please do that activity, and then uh, we will continue discussing the solution afterwards. All right? So thank you for listening. Goodbye.